Hi everyone, my name is Laurie and welcome along to another edition of DR Boxing Weekly, the show that covers all the relevant stories in boxing. Before we start, let me quickly introduce my guests. First to my left, the voice of reason, Mr. Nick Francis in the you house. Had, you had to spit that out today. You didn't even want to say it. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> and to my right, we got Mr. James Toon in the house. Yes, aka the Armenian Raheem Sterling. If you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. But Armenian you don't know. Raheem Sterling. Um, I should point out that we're missing our boy Shane, Shane Willoughby. He can't be with us today. He sends his apologies. He's on a work commitment, so we'll try our best to get through the show without him. And, Is he uh, traveling again? Huh? He will be travelling soon. Actually, he told me today he's um, lining up his tickets and flight for the Errol Spence, um, Terence Crawford, Terrence Bud yeah. Crawford fight. You going out there? So I'd love to, but I'm not yeah. sure if my pocket can hold that, man. Yeah. Shane's the baller. He is, yeah. But without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Um, this weekend, taking place at the AO Arena in Manchester, I would say the biggest female fight of the year takes place. I'll be interested to hear what these guys say. My man is looking at me a little studious, but but let me let me let me let me uh, let me nail it. Let me land. Um, Franchon Cruz Desern of the USA. She defends her undisputed super middleweight titles against the UK Savannah Marshall. And before I bring you guys in, quick tailor the tape. Um, Franchon Cruz Desern, born in the USA, Virginia, but she now fights out of Baltimore. She's 36 years old has the nickname the heavy hitting diva, five for eight, um, as I said, current undisputed super middleweight champion, 10 fights, eight wins, two KOs, just one loss, that was in her debut to none other than Clarissa Shields. And there's one no contest in there where her opponent, a Mexican girl, well, um, <laughs> failed a drugs test and there's all sorts of complications around that. But so did they have to... the fight or they didn't? They had the fight, um, but mm -hmm. the girl failed a drugs test. I think there was some, I won't, I, won't, I won't go there. Some, okay, uh, go. some Mexican beef. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But there's okay. other stuff underpinning that whole fight Understood. that are probably best not to get into, yeah. if yeah. you see what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Franchon Cruz de Zerm, man. Um, bit of a character. Singer, songwriter, fashion designer. Was a contestant on the American Idol talent show. She's co-trained by her husband, mother of five, very good amateur, eight-time national champion. She also fought Savannah Marshall in the amateurs, actually. Lost a close decision. That was back in 2011. Um, Savannah Marshall, born in the UK, Hartlepool, northeast of England, 32 years old, nicknamed the Silent Assassin, height of 5 foot 11, uh, former middleweight champion until she lost to Clarissa Shields. 13 fights, 12 wins, 10 KOs. That's the highest KO percentage in women's boxing. The one loss I spoke about to Clarissa Shields, which is her last fight last year. I was at that fight. Great fight, great event. Uh, she trained by Peter Fury. Uh, very good amateur, former national champion, uh, amateur world champion, I think, in 2012. She went to the Olympics. She won a Commonwealth Games gold medalist. So, you know, listen, man, talented lady, very good fighter. Um, let's start with Nick. What do you make of this fight, bro? Yeah, you'd have to say they're probably the... I know um, Katie Taylor's coming towards the tail end of her career, but Savannah Marshall, arguably the second name in terms of if you're taking into, every, taking into account everything, the sales and... The, the notoriety and everything like that and the second second biggest, to who? To, to, to Katie Taylor what, in, in British, in British oh, women's oh, 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 no 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 on this side of the pond oh I see Sorry, so British, I was going to yeah. say and, and uh, on the other side of the pond you nearly drew me out there, <laughs> you're, yeah. you're getting vexed for no reason let, let me land let me land where's the gavel <laughs> and on the other side of the pond probably uh, you know second biggest name as well so you'd have to say the biggest the biggest fight yeah. in women's boxing at the moment um, I you know, I, I don't I, disagree with. Uh, well, it's not your time to seconds. disagree. It's so not. What, it's, so not it's not your time. It's not your time. Really it's, not, it's not your time to disagree. I'm just point. inquiring. So, it's just just to clarify, you're saying Desern is the second biggest name in American women's boxing. Who would you have above her? Uh, Serrano. Amanda Serrano. No, but it's, it's a fight. So if you. No, but yeah, I know, I know what he's saying. But yeah, it's a big I'm, I'm in, saying, term, in terms of the Venn diagram of year, these two fighters. That's the big Venn diagram. It is. It's true. I'm going to bring you in a minute. What I'm saying is, this year to me, this fight, Cruz de Zern versus Savannah Marshall in this country, because you've got to remember that the UK is the hotbed of boxing for women at the moment. This fight is the biggest fight in women's boxing this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd agree. What do you think? <sighs> Katie Taylor. Katie Taylor. She's coming off a loss. And, no, no. But you, her last fight, that was a massive, massive fight. You had McGregor big on the promo, huge I, fight in Ireland. I, I was going to say the same thing, week. but the, the problem is Chantel Cameron doesn't have as big a status yeah, anywhere yeah, close yeah, to both yeah, these. Yeah. I agree. I'm a big Chantel Cameron fan. I'm the only one on the show that picked her to win. But 
She doesn't have a profile like Yeah, like but Eva Katie Taylor no, no, carried the show yeah, so hard. Because I said that Chantel Cameron would win, but she wouldn't get the decision I, because she was fighting Katie Taylor. I'll, I'll and so, then, so then you said she wouldn't win. There you go. I don't know. Look, I think it's tough. If you're talking about as in an actual competitive fight and what it means for like the careers going forward, I understand that point. I still think the spectacle of Katie Taylor's last fight, especially with McGregor in the build-up, which... I know it's Same you're going to call me a fanboy, but it was a huge factor in the promotion. It brought a lot of eyeballs to it. It was, I think, was it her first fight in Ireland in mm. uh, I, I a long think time? You, so. I, I see where you're coming from, but I still I agree with Nick. The two contestants, the two combatants, mean, for me means that this fight is big. On, on that side, I understand. Yeah, yeah. On a purely competitive basis yeah, and what yeah, it means for yeah. for the divisions, yeah. yeah, I agree on that. Right. Okay. We got there in the end. So. <laughs> it's an interesting. It's an interesting debate, though. In, I think it's in terms of what you see as a big fight, do you see it as purely spectacle numbers, like a Javonta Davis? No, I think it's versus, a more competitive uh, fight. Ryan. I think it's yeah. It's going to sell a load of tickets. I'm sure the arena will be packed out. Um, They've both only lost to one person. But like, what do you see? Like, do you see Lomachenko versus Haney as a bigger fight, or Ryan Garcia versus uh, Tank Davis? Because one drew more numbers, but one arguably is of two people of a higher competitive caliber. In, in the ideal world, you'd want you'd want a bit of both. And I think in this fight, you get a little bit of both. They're not the profile of a Ryan Garcia or a McGregor or the big big profiles. But for professional boxers, they are sizable pro profiles. Yeah. Obviously, they're women's bo it's women's boxing as well, and they are very, very competitive fighters as well. So that that di that Venn diagram of all of those different factors makes you got to remember as well. Fight. Katie Taylor was moving up in weight to take on Chantel Cameron. I know Savannah yeah. was moving up in weight, but she struggles to make middleweight. What do you guys so, make of of Savannah Marshall? Obviously, in her stardom and her her everything. Obviously, going coming off that loss to Clarissa Shields, that was quite big because she did very well was, against Clarissa. She Shields. she did she did all right, but I think you could see there was a slight gulf in class between yeah, Clarissa. Then, Shields, as Clarissa there Shields is because Clarissa about. Shields is <laughs> arguably the greatest woman boxer of all time. But what does that do to Savannah's Marshall's like caliber to her status? In, to her in the stock, of, I, of I don't think it's affected boxing. it. In fact, if anything, it's risen. Mm -hmm. Why um, would you say it's risen? Because she did better than I thought she would do. I'm being introduced to a, 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 a whole other yeah. audience. To the American it was audience. A, yeah. It was a great occasion. I was there that night. It was a great fight. It was a competitive fight. Savannah did buzz. Clarissa Shields on more than one occasion, something that Clarissa Shields, and she's not given to this kind of stuff. She admitted that she got buzzed a couple of yeah. times. Um, but in terms of this fight, uh, yeah. let's, let's concentrate on this fight. Yeah. How do you see it playing out? Because um, uh, I think it's going to be very competitive. I right? think very competitive. I might, it's a Marshall on decision, Savannah Marshall decision. Mm. I think- uh, Why? Discerns 36. I think um, I think the age could play a factor. It's not going to be a knockout fight. So down the home stretch, I think. I actually think Discern might be a better boxer, but not as... Better boxer than Savannah Marshall. Right? Potentially, but not. But maybe I might I edge so. Savannah Marshall on the, the, the fitness and the durability and the it's not quite youth, but a lot younger than, than 36. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. James. What, I think she's also on? got obviously the, the height, the reach, I believe yeah. advantage. I think that's something she didn't really utilize as well as I wanted her to in the Clarissa Shields fight. I think she kind of played into Clarissa Shields hands a little bit or her game plan. I think she could have maybe kept it more at range. She could have moved around. Her footwork could have been slightly better. I think in this fight, that's something that she's going to need to address. And coming off a loss like that to, to Clarissa Shields, there's two ways your career can go. You can either bounce back, you can learn from that like Canelo did when he fought Floyd Mayweather. And then after that, it's like he unlocked a new level of understanding, a new comprehension of the game, and he became a better fighter for it. Or you can go the other way where you see that as the pinnacle of boxing you haven't quite been able to make that step and all of a sudden things don't go as well for you and, and mentally it's very hard to recover from that so i think this is going to be a big test for her i think it's going to be, show a lot as to where her career is going from this point but i do back her to bounce back i think she's a very mentally strong woman and it's very brave as well mentally strong like you said it's very brave as well not often do we see someone lose and then fight what might be the, the next hardest fight in that division mm -hmm. after that loss. They, you know, not dropping all the way down the pecking order, taking an easy fight and then, you know, recalibrating um, like yeah. some of the other fighters do, but going actually for quite a difficult test straight afterwards. Well, it's interesting because in the immediate aftermath of the fight with Clarissa Shields, um, while she was still in the ring, uh, Franchon Cruz de Zern, who was there on the night, stood by the ring apron and called her out and said, listen, man, if you want to step up in weight to 168, I'll give you a shot. 
and here we are, you know. Yeah. Um, but listen, I've studied both the fighters um, and Savannah Marshall, as James said quite rightly, taller, longer reach, the more well-schooled, has a better jab, has a better fundamentals. Mm. She also has very good power. I mentioned it before. I yeah. think she's got a KO percentage of... <laughs> So 70 percent, yeah, it? 10 KOs in 13, yeah. 10, 13, the late so 70s, which 76.92 percent, yeah, late 70s, which for women's boxing is quite phenomenal, actually, because mm -hmm. you think you'll find most of the women's fighters, um, they're not that big punchers, yeah. but she is, um, she can also box, so she's a knockout, yeah. a knock, like not a knockout artist, but if you've got one or two knockouts on your record in the female boxing world, mm -hmm. that's no, but I've seen her late 10, 10 knockouts. Yeah, but that's, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. That's why yeah, it's so, she's it's so crazy. Girls, yeah. You know what I mean? I've seen her do it um, a couple of times and she can really punch. Um, do you think she can stop Desern? Well, this is it. Um, Desern is known as very tough, very rough. She's a big, strong girl, likes to fight in the inside, likes to rough her opponents up, not averse to the dirty tactic either. So she will bring it yeah. um, because she's not going to outbox Savannah Marshall. She doesn't have those type of technical skills. But um, you don't want to underestimate her because she's tough, she's rough, she's willing. She'll get in there, she'll spoil, and she'll make it a hard night's work. And she's a very confident woman, as you can see. Anyone who's seen, I don't know if you watch the gloves. Yeah. Gloves are off between the two of them. She comes across as a real character, both inside and outside the ring. So she yeah. does bring certain attributes that will make it tough for Savannah Marshall. But I just think that in the final analysis, man, Savannah Marshall will have too much for her. Yeah. Um, and I see Savannah Marshall maybe not stopping her, but I think she'll put it on her a little bit um, because I think having watched some of Franchon's fights that she starts quite strong and then you see a gas tank kind of waver that's, a little that's bit. what i'm saying yeah uh, and i think that savannah you, you can just tell by the way they're built as well the whole physics of it yeah savannah's taller he's more and more of an athlete um more built for distance and i just think that after around about five six when she's established the jab backed up by the right hand i just think she'll be pretty formidable force. And I think that Franchon will struggle, man. So I've yeah. got Savannah Marshall on points. Yeah, I, I, I got to agree. I do, like I said, it could go either way, but I do think probably 78% of me or 70, 80% of me is leaning to a Savannah Marshall win. I think Desern similar in a way to Clarissa Shields, like you said, the smaller person, someone that's going to try and rough her up, make it a more ugly, dirty fight, trying to stop no, I don't Savannah. Know, I think you're being a bit uh, um, unkind to I'm Clarissa. Not, Clarissa's no, I'm not saying that as in, I, I know Clarissa, very, very technical. I'm not saying that Cruz Design is, is on the level technically of Clarissa Shields, but what I mean is the way that Clarissa Shields got rid of all of Savannah Marshall's physical attributes in terms of the reach, the way that she made it play into her game plan. I think Cruz Desern is going to try and do a similar thing, but I think because she's already been in there with someone that's tried to do that, tried to get it to be a closer, dirtier fight, you know, more rough inside kind of boxing, she's done it against someone that's of a lot higher caliber. So I think she will now know how to deal with someone like that a lot more. And I think she will be able to use her, her, her reach. You keep her at bay. And I do think she will probably get it done on points as well. Yeah. Um, Nick? I, I said uh, Marshall on points as well. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's leading towards that. I think it will be a very entertaining fight. Especially though. it's the gas tank is the problem, especially mm. with that style. You know, you look at a, a Derek Chisora type, you know, rough and tumble, trying to rough people up and maybe a little bit of dirty tactics. And, you know, it can work and you can get some joy even against boxers that are better than you, like we saw against Usyk. But yeah. it is super tiring, especially for Franchon being 36 years old. Yeah, she's got to make it physical because mm. there's no way she's going to be able to outbox Savannah Marshall. She's got to get in close, rough her up. I mean, you know what I mean? Throw shots from different angles, mm. push her back, stick her forearm in her face. Get you know a couple I mean? of warnings mm -hmm. from the ref. Yeah, make it a rough night, push her. Do a bit of a Coley action. <laughs> Anything but that. Anything but that. <laughs> but you know what I mean? She's got to spoil, make it rough and tough and nasty in there. And you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, so we're all agreed that um, Savannah. Savannah Marshall will marshal the ring. Um, should also say on the undercard to that fight, um, Liverpool's Natasha Jonas, she's fighting. She's trying to become a two-weight world champion when she challenges uh, Candy Wyatt. I think it's for the vacant IBF title. Uh, Natasha Jonas really holds straps at junior middleweight. So she's coming down in weight for this fight um, against Candy Wyatt uh, from Canada, who's 32 years old, 15 fights, 11 wins, three KOs, four losses. Um, Natasha Jonas, a uh, similar record, but more impressive opponents. 
I think she's got something mm -hmm. like 16 fights, 13 wins. She's also got a good KO percentage, mm -hmm. actually. In 13 wins, two losses, yeah, one draw. Yeah, one of those losses was to Katie Taylor. Mm -hmm. uh, one draw to Terry Harper. Okay. Now, for me, uh, I think this fight here highlights the problem in women's boxing. Mm. Um, you know, some people the might got take the golf in quality. Yeah, there, there's a paucity of deep talent. So, mm -hmm. at the very top, you have some very talented women's fighters: Katie Taylor, Clarissa Shields, Savannah Marshall, Cruz Desern, Mc Jessica McCaskill. Yeah, I mean, the list goes on. Um, mm -hmm. Serrano, you know what I mean. However, if you go beneath that. There's not a great deal of talent. And I think that this fight here for a yeah. so-called world title, um, Natasha's coming down in weight to take on a girl. That I've seen this girl fight, actually, yeah. uh, Candy White. And I have to say, she's not that good. I see, I saw her fight. I think it was Jessica McCaskill. Mm -hmm. yeah, and she, she got broke up, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's the only thing yeah. you can say is that she's tough. No, I saw you're... she's fought for two vacant titles before. Yeah, so this would be the yeah. third time. Did she win yeah. either of those? No, no. No, okay, so no. she's fought for two vacant titles and lost them both. Yeah. No, you're right. There's there's a big issue, so especially a bit of a in, in, grass, in grassroots women's boxing. I remember when I was speaking to Ebony Bridges a couple of years ago, she was saying when she started in Australia, it's actually illegal for a certain amount of time for women to box there. And then she was actually having to pay like 5,000, 6,000 pounds out of her own money to sort everything out for the fights to try and give people like almost even free access to the fights just yes. to try and build something around it when she was fighting in Australia at the time. And globally, there is a big problem in women's boxing that it is quite behind the curve of a lot of other sports, which is why, you know, the things that that boxer have been doing recently, I, I have to commend them with, with the all women's boxing events, yeah. the way that they're, they're starting to build it up. Because if you have more events like this, if you have more women on the marquee, it's only going to bring more women up through the ranks. It's only going to allow more opportunities on the undercard for these women. So Actually, I when I was talking about top women's thing. boxer, how could I leave that? Alicia Baumgartner is one of my favorite yeah. Uh, yeah. female fighters. It's difficult. Obviously, it's, women's boxing is suffering from lack of numbers. That's, that's yeah, really, that's really what it is. There's the, a dearth of talent. Yeah, the, the, ta the talent is very good fighters. Yeah. But then when you dip beneath the, the top there, there, there can be a bit of a chasm. And yeah. I think this fight here with Jonas and Candy Wyatt, exposes that frailty. Yeah. Um, just for the record, man, I think it's going to be an easy win for Natasha Jonas. It should be. The most I could see Candy White doing is going the distance, but she'll probably take a bit of a beating, to be honest, if she does go the distance. So, yeah, I'm going to put it out there straight away, I think. Natasha Jonas wins and wins fairly comfortably. Nick? Yeah, same. I think, um, obviously, we need to, not we in this room, but we in, in the sport generally have to make a push to get more women into the sport because there is that gap. And it, that happens in men's boxing as well. Different weight classes, sometimes you have that where you've got three, four, five guys that are elite and then the, the, the rest are way down the pecking order. So it does happen in peaks and troughs, but we have so many men that are into, into boxing that we can find people that can bridge that gap a lot easier. Cause it, I think it just comes down to numbers and obviously money as well to actually go and fight professionally and take that financial hit at the beginning. But yeah, this should be a walkover for Natasha Jonas. Anything less than that is, uh, would be a real uh, damnation. James? I agree with everything you're saying. I mm. think it's gonna mm. not go to distance. I think she's gonna not And go just out. finally, I should mention a, another domestic showdown this week in, taking place, um, Dalton Smith. He's fighting for the British and Commonwealth Junior Welterweight titles against Sam Maxwell. Uh, Dawn Smith's from Sheffield, Sam Maxwell's from Liverpool. Uh, they're fighting this weekend. Um, it should be a very good fight. Yeah. But I've got to say that Dalton Smith appears to be the man on the up and up. Um, 14 fights, 14 wins, 10 KOs, no losses. Sam Maxwell, 18 fights, 17 wins, 11 KOs, one loss. Um, I've got to say that Sam Maxwell... Decent fighter, but Dalton Smith is the man sort of on the up and up in it. He's a prospect, so I've got to lean towards Dalton he, Smith. He, he is, but I think this fight will be more competitive than people are are uh, giving it giving it credit for. I think Sam Maxwell is a very a reasonably accomplished am amateur. Yeah, good amateur. Very, very good, uh, very steady professional. Um, I think Dalton Smith wins, but I think it'll be quite competitive. I see some people just expecting a, a bit of a walkover job, but I do think it's I think Dalton very, Smith is highly competitive. touted and quite rightly, he's yeah. very good. And, you know, Sam Maxwell's a good fighter as well, a good domestic fighter. Yeah. I thought he got a bit fortunate when he won the uh, Commonwealth title. I think he fought um, Akeem Ennis Brown from Bristol. I remember, or Gloucester, one of them places. Yeah. I remember place, watching yeah. that fight and I thought he got very lucky in that fight. Mm. Um, and then he suffered a knockout loss after that. Then he's had a couple of wins. Mm. 
So he's in a better place now, but I can't see past Dalton Smith for this yeah. fight. I just think he's too good. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I, I agree as well. I mean, he had the, the TKO loss to Alejandro Meneses. Yeah, one win against Sean him. Cooper this year. Since then, straight into the Dalton Smith fight. I mean, again, if you just look at the records of the people they beat, I think it is a lot more of an impressive resume. Sam Maxwell, like you said, he's older. He's got more experienced, very highly touted uh, youngster. Dan, do, you, do you count 26 years old as young in the sport of boxing? He's not, well, not younger than 30 odds. And yeah. not, not a lot of miles on the clock, I think. Yeah, not thing, a lot yeah. of miles. So, but it's a big test. He's a fresh, he's a fresh 26 guy. Year old, yeah. a, a, a litmus test, if you will, to see if he's at Sam the top Sam Maxwell's level, 34, but I do think... which for junior world to wait? I thought yeah. he was 32. 34. No, 34. 34. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's not young for a junior world to wait. He did have quite an extensive amateur career so he's been around a while yeah um so it's good it's a good test for dalton smith it's a crossroads and I do fight, think a, crossroads fight yeah. a litmus test i think because i think come if maxwell loses that he's pretty much out of the picture isn't he? at the yeah. top level but i don't think i don't think he'll he'll get him out of there i think maxwell will be able to go the distance Distance's i think his experience will, will test well and i think he will trouble dalton smith a little bit but i still think he'll come out with a decision yeah i agree like i said i think uh, dalton smith wins but i think it'll be a very clear fight Got to agree. Um, I'm going strongly for Dalton Smith. Could even be a late stoppage, but I'm going for Dalton Smith. <laughs> okay, bros. Um, that's it for this show. Please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button for more DR Sports and more DR Boxing content. Thank you very much, guys. We're out. We'll see you soon. Take care.